So here's the, the, the information they've given you. You have your sample blank, and then you have a sample that was 6 mils of sample, 12 mils of sample, and 18 mils of sample. Here was your initial DO, then you incubated it for 5 days, and you got a final DO. So let's uh, do those steps. So step one is find the DO depletion of your blank. So 8.3 minus 8.2 equals 0 0.1. So of your blank, the DO depleted by 0.1. Is that good? Yes. DO depletion was less than 0.2. So the sample was okay. If it had been 0.3, sample's bad. You can't, or the whole entire test is bad. You can't even do it anymore. All right, so now let's, uh, step two, let's find the DO depletion and make sure that we're in with okay limits of this sample, this sample, and this sample. So 8.2 minus 5.6, initial minus final, equals 2.6. Is that a good sample? Yes. The final DO, this number, was greater than or equal to one, and the DO depletion, this number, was greater than or equal to 2. Forgot the greater than or equal part. So this sample is okay. We don't have to cross this sample out. So next do the next sample. So 8.3 initial minus 3 final equals 5.3. Is this sample okay? Yes. Final DO is greater than or equal to 1, so this number, and DO depletion was greater than or equal to 2 this number. Now let's do the next sample. 8.2 minus 0 0.8 equals 7.4. Is this number okay? No, it's bad. And the reason is because your final DO, this number, was less than 1. So if you got this problem on the state, what you would do right now is you would go ahead and cross out that sample. That sample is invalid. You cannot perform the rest of the steps on that sample because it doesn't meet the criteria that you need. But we are going to perform the next steps on these two samples because they do meet the criteria that we need. So now let's go ahead and do that. So now we have to find our sample concentration. So we've got this sample and this sample. So and remember it's the sample volume, so six mils of sample, divided by 300. The BOD bottles are 300 mils. 6 divided by 300 equals 0.02 percent. So that's the sample concentration of sample 1. Now we're going to find out the BOD of sample 1. 8.2, which is initial DO, minus final DO, 5.6, equals a DO depletion of 2.6. So 2.6 divided by your sample concentration will give you the BOD. And the BOD of this particular sample is 130 milligrams per liter. So 8.2 minus 5.6 equals 2.6 divided by 0 0.02, which is the percent concentration. Now let's do the next sample. So 12 divided by 300 will give me a sample concentration of 0.04%. So it's double this number. 6 mils doubled is 12 mils. 0 0.02 doubled is 0 0.04. So now 8.3 minus 3 gives me a DO depletion of 5.3. So 5.3 divided by 0 0.04 should give me a BOD of 133. Now since I screwed that up, let me check that that number is right. Yes, okay, so 133 milligrams per liter is, this, is the beauty of this sample. Now the reported value is the average of these two samples. So we're going to go ahead and add 133 plus 130, which equals 263 and then divide by the number of samples. I've got two samples that I did, so I'm going to divide 263 by 2. And your DO to report to the state would be 131.5 milligrams per liter of BOD. And that's all there is to it to a, a BOD test. The hardest part is memorizing those, um, those rules that you have to have. 
because um, they they do throw those rules at you. I, on my test, I had to cross out a couple samples because they were in bad. The only rule I don't think they would violate on the test is the uh, sample blank DO depletion, because uh, I find it hard to believe that they would give you a math problem that the correct answer is, I don't have to do this math problem, because then you would get full credit for pretty much doing nothing. So uh, I, I doubt they would ever um, do that, so uh, I'd be shocked if they did. So more than likely the rules that they're going to violate are on these samples and not on the sample blank. So I'll look out for that. Now uh, NBOD, nitrogenous BOD. To figure this out, to find the NBOD, they will give you a problem worded something like this. And this is how they would word it. A BOD test ran on a secondary effluent is found to be 18 milligrams per liter. So that's BOD test, that's the total BOD. A BOD test is run on the same sample using a nitrogen inhibitor. The data is presented below, and uh, there would be data here that uh, you know looks just like the data we did for BOD. And they want you to calculate the NBOD. When they say nitrogen inhibitor, it means that the BOD results do not include BOD caused by nitrogen. They're, in, they're inhibiting, suppressing the nitrogen part of the BOD. So these results, since they're suppressed results, will be less than the total BOD of 18 milligrams per liter. So this is total. This is BOD of everything. Now if, you've, now if you take that sample and you run nitrogen inhibitor, you're doing a BOD without nitrogen. So it's going to be less than the total BOD of 18. And you would perform the BOD test exactly the way we just did. You'd make sure all the rules applied, uh, that none of them were violated, uh, the exact same steps. And there's just one additional step, which is when you get those results, you need to subtract them from the total BOD. So the results here will be like 14 of an NBOD. So, um, you would take 18 minus 14, and uh, that means that 4 milligrams per liter of BOD are caused by nitrogen, because you suppress that nitrogen. You know the total, you know the total without nitrogen, so when you subtract those two, that tells you how much nitrogen is causing the BOD. And uh, so that's the only additional step you would have to do, and uh, it's not very hard, it's just something you got to... Uh, know how to do. So subtract the total from the inhibited and it gives you the nitrogenous BOD. <coughs> Alright.